So let's talk a little bit more about least squares estimation of our regression parameter vector beta when we are representing a multiple linear regression model using matrices. So we have our regression model y equals x beta plus epsilon. And really what this does is it partitions the response into two parts. The first is a systematic or mean component, x beta. This is the average relationship between the response and the regressive variables. And then we have a random component, epsilon. And just like we did for simple linear regression, we want to choose beta so that the systematic part explains as much of the response as possible, i.e. we want to minimize the errors in some way. So the regression parameters can once again be estimated using ordinary least squares. So we want to minimize residual sums of squares. And so we have the residual sums of squares can essentially be represented, uh, well, I guess I should be careful here. So we're talking about minimizing the errors in this case. And so we're going to sum up the squared errors, which in matrix notation is epsilon transpose epsilon. And epsilon, if we do a little algebra here, is equal to y minus x beta. So epsilon transpose epsilon can be rewritten as y minus x beta transpose times y minus x beta. And the question is, how do we find the value of beta that minimizes q? Okay. So if we expand Q, we actually get Y transpose Y minus 2 beta transpose X transpose Y plus beta transpose X transpose X times beta. So that's just expanding out that linear algebra equation. And in order to find the beta that minimizes this objective function, we can once again do some calculus. So now we're doing calculus related to uh, matrices instead of individual parameters like we were in the previous setting. So we take the partial derivative of Q with respect to beta, and though you may not know this from based on your previous experience, this is going to give you minus 2x transpose y plus 2x transpose x beta. And so if we set that equal to 0, we uh, take the two parts on opposite sides and we divide by 2, we get the normal equations x transpose x beta equals x transpose y. And we want to solve for beta because we're trying to find the beta, the beta that minimizes this Q function, this objective function. And provided that X transpose X is invertible, we multiply both sides by the inverse of X transpose X. We're left with beta on this side, and then we get X transpose X inverse X transpose Y on the other side. And so our solution for beta hat, the one that is going to minimize our objective function, is beta hat equals X transpose X inverse times x transpose y. So this is the ordinary least squares estimator of beta in a multiple regression context. And from that, we can derive our fitted values using matrix notation. So our fitted values can be stored in the vector y hat, which is a column vector with y1 hat, y2 hat, up to y n hat. We can write y hat as x beta hat, where x is our observed matrix, our matrix of covariates. Our matrix of regressors. Uh, X, and then because beta hat is x transpose x inverse x transpose y, we substitute that in. And in fact, this first part of this expression involving all the x's is often defined to be h, where h is known as the hat matrix or projection matrix. And the hat matrix is the orthogonal projection of y onto the space spanned by x. So this is like a, a geometric linear algebra interpretation. So I also want to mention that even though we're writing y hat as h y, where h is the hat matrix, h is really useful only for theoretical computations. People never compute h when they're trying to compute the fitted values because it's too large. So it's an n by n matrix, which means that when you have to do the matrix algebra, uh, it takes a lot longer to compute than if you do it in, in other ways. So y hat equals the hat matrix times the observed vector of responses uh, but we wouldn't normally compute it in this way. So the i fitted value is obtained by simply taking the estimated regression coefficients and multiplying them by the regressor values for the i observations. So this has the same general definition that we saw earlier in this chapter. But I just want to emphasize once again that the i fitted value is the estimated mean response for the i observation. And that's actually why I wrote it in this format right here. So E stands for expected value, and so it's the estimated expected value or the estimated mean response given these value of our regressor variables. 
So just like we had a fitted line for simple linear regression, you can talk about the fitted model. And our fitted model, which we denote by y hat or e hat of y given x, is just the linear combination of regression coefficients multiplied by the generic regressors. And this, the fitted model is the estimated, response, estimated mean response as a function of our regressors. And now that we have computed the fitted values, we can finally compute the residuals, which we'll denote that in matrix form notation as epsilon hat, where epsilon hat is that vector that includes epsilon 1 hat, epsilon 2 hat, up to epsilon n hat. And we can write epsilon hat as y minus y hat, responses minus the fitted values, and because y hat is equal to hy, we can write that as i minus h times y, where i is the identity matrix of size n by n.